come in for today's message, all, all we want you to do is realize that, that you are a completed work in Christ. But you got to work on yourself. He's completed everything that he needs to complete in us. But we got to continue to grow in him. Amen. Amen. So if you got your Bibles, let's please turn to the book of uh, Romans. Chapter 5. I'm going to read the first two verses, 1 and 2, and then we'll get into this word that, that God has for us today. Romans chapter, Romans chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Do a little different today. I'm going to come down here for a moment with you guys and ladies. <laughs> If you have it, please stand to your feet. Everybody do me a favor. Say, therefore. Therefore. Do you understand what therefore means? Hereafter? Okay, what? Stay with me. Therefore, having been justified. So this therefore is actually giving you a warning. It's telling you something. Therefore. I'm about to tell you something. So therefore, having been justified by faith, who's been justified by faith? We have. We have. Oh, okay. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God Amen. through our Lord Jesus Christ. And it's a key that he's given us right here, that we have peace mm -hmm. with our Lord Jesus Christ. We have peace, verse number two. Through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. You may have a seat in the presence of God. It, so God is telling us, listen to me. I have something that I need to share with you. And I, I want you to understand and I want you to, to grasp hold to this thing. Let me ask you a question, and it, it could be a rhetorical question. You can answer it, or you could just sit up and ponder about it. What is the, the Christian life? What is the Christian life? I was just, just take a moment. Just think about that for a moment. I know we don't want to have no quiet, it's still moment, but I, I want you to really ponder on that. What is, and let me, let me change it, what is the whole of a Christian life? No, we just read scripture. Look, let's look at the scripture. What is the whole of Christian life? Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in whole of the glory of God. In, in Sunday school this morning, we learned something. We learned something very important that that. If you don't understand the wholeness of a sheep, you really miss the scripture, what it talks about. So I'm going to digress a moment, and I want you to go to the book of Luke, chapter 15. Is it that, Pastor Wendy, chapter 15 it was? Yeah, Luke 15. And it's talking about the parable, and, and I'm going to tie this in together. This, it was not part of the message that God gave me, but he wants to tie something in together. Remember, what is the whole of a Christian life? So I want to I tie something in there. Uh, Luke chapter 15, I'm going to read verses 1 through 7. Then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him. To hear him. And, and this is a key for the Christian lifestyle. He said, he said that in the scripture it says, all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him. Why did they say tax collectors? If you understand about these tax collectors, they were cheaters. They were crooked and they're, and they're dealing with the people. So not watch. Jesus said, I mean, in this parable, they said that all the tax collectors and all the sinners drew near to him. So all the sinners, all the cheaters, all of those that did wrong drew near to Christ. It's a key in there. 
that, that we missed. It, 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 if you have your Bible, it says, drew near to him. He didn't go after them. They drew, they came to him. They was in search of something from him. Remember the question I asked you. What is, what is the, um, the life? What is the Christian life? What's the whole of a Christian life? So what, let's go back. So then all the tax collectors and all the sinners drew near to him to hear him. And, and the world is going to tell you, or, or, or watch this, the ones that don't understand the totality of the whole of the Christian lifestyle is going to tell you, why are you hanging out with those people? Why are you around those people that that's not even thinking about living a whole or living a righteous life? Why are you there? And I told Pastor Woody, you got to understand that, that we is certain people that, that we don't allow into our house. If you understand what I'm saying. It's, you can't, and I'm saying you either can't allow everybody into your house. You can let people, that, that you can allow people in your church home, but some of those people that you allow in your church home can't come to your home. Because everybody won't be able to understand you in your home. And it's not that you're trying to hide anything. The simplest way I told her, when I go home and, and, I, and I, I, wanna, I want to woo her, I don't put on the Christian music. I don't put on Mahalia Jackson. I don't, I don't put on rough, rough Side of the Mountain. I might put a little, a little bit of Luther on for her. I might put a little uh, uh, um, Marvin Gaye because that's us. But some people might not be able to handle the openness of me and my wife that way. And it, it might lose them. But remember, I'm not, I'm not shunning off who I am. I'm still an open book. But I understand how people receive different people. So different people will see me in a different light when I'm open that way. And they might not be able to stay in ministry. So you got to understand who you're dealing with, in other words. So Jesus understood who he was dealing with. He didn't cut nobody off. And I'm telling you that because I'm not cutting anybody off from the ministry. But I have to cut some people off from my life the way I minister to her. Do you understand me? Okay. So he said in verse number two, he said, And the Pharisees and the, scri the scribes complained, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So now I told you it's not everybody that you can eat with in your home. But it's not saying that you can't have, have, have friends and family day in the ministry. And be able to eat with them in the ministry. Okay. I'm not kicking anybody away. We want people to come to the ministry. But how we do that pastor? How we get them there? God gives us this thing that's called a discerning spirit. God placed somebody on your heart today. And you thought about them. And, and watch. Okay, I thought about them, but we didn't go any farther. I should have called that individual. I should have checked on that individual. But they was on my heart, and I left it there. That's an opportunity to minister. If you understand what I'm saying. God gives you what I told you, a discerning spirit Christian life and a whole is what we're talking about. We're, and that's not even the subject. It's being justified by faith. So when God talks to you in faith, you got to hear him and react on it. People come and people go into ministry. God places those people in your heart. Watch. I told Pastor Wendy, we have to call them. It's not that we're trying to make them come back or get them back here, but I'm calling and check on your welfare. It's not that I want, you don't, hey, as long as you go into a church, but what I'm doing is freeing myself from what God told me to do. I'm calling sister Alice. How you doing? I'm not calling you and talk about top of the mountain. I'm calling you to talk about you and, see, and let you know that you're on my mind. Can I pray with you? Excuse me. Can we touch and agree? And I, I pray that you're in the ministry. But you're leaving the door open. Why? Watch this. Verse number three. So he spoke these parables to them saying, 
What man of you having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? Something important here that most of us don't understand as Christians, or not even Christians, but a shepherd. And I'm not talking about the shepherd that's in the house. Shepherd, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> shepherding people. What I'm talking about is the shepherd of the flock in the fields. Why did he leave the 99? He left the 99 because he understood that the 99 knew what to do. He understood that they were taken care of. Now I'm mixing, I'm mixing church and what, what this parable is talking about. So you have a pastor that has assistant pastors. They have ministers. So they go out for a few weeks. They, they're not concerned about who they left here because they understand who they have that's going to continue to follow in a line that was already set as a standard. So back to this one sheep. And this is what, what you have to understand. When a sheep by itself is separated from everyone else, it stops. It lies down and does not move because it's lost. And it does not know what to do. Are you understanding me? So watch this. When, you, when somebody leaves the ministry by themselves, this is why we check on them. They might, they're out of the comfort of the 99. Are you hearing me? And they get out there and they lay down and they are accessible to unknown means or unknown people. How you think children or young boys and young girls get in these gangs? Because they left. They're separated. They're that one sheep that got lost. They're out there by themselves. But see, the whole of the ministry or the purpose of a Christian lifestyle is to get those ones that's out there. We got to show them love. I, I, let me qualify that. We got to be love. Love has to zoom out of us so then we can be able to win souls back into the house of God. The whole of Christianity is that we want to do what the Father does. And the Father wants to bring all his children home. Do you hear me? So as we were writing that, he gave, as we were reading that this morning afterwards, he gave me this. He said, the whole Christian life is the result of God's grace in which we stand. So our life is by the grace of God. And that we need to stand on. So then watch this. His, his favor and his provision in Christ that we do not deserve. So his favor... And his provision that he gives us through Christ, his son, we didn't even deserve it. But God says because, he says, the glory of God is in the manifestation of God. Oh, you might have missed that. The glory in God is because of the manifestation in God. So all of it is as one plus one equals two. But what happens is God plus God equals God. I, I think Pastor Archie always says that. So if we understand it, it's a watch. He says the manifestation is in me. But watch. It's the outward shining of his inward being. <laughs> Whoa, what do you say? So the inward being of God is love. So watch, his inward being is shining out so that we can be attached to him. Do you hear me? All right, that's just a sidebar to what God gave me for today. So watch this. You are being justified by faith is the subject title. This is part two. You being justified. Do you understand what justified is? God says, I've given everything that you need to you so that you're justified to go out and win souls on my behalf. You are my mouthpiece. You are my legs. You are my hand. You are my feet. I've justified you when I sent my son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for you and me. 
I'm justified. And can't nobody take that from me. I'm justified to do everything that God wants me to do because he put a provision in me. As long as you follow me, you, and that me is Christ, as long as you follow Christ, you, got, you can win people, and I'm going to lead you and direct you to the place that you need to go. Because you're justified. You're justified. Romans 5 and 17 says, it says, but when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's higher servants have bread enough and to spare and I perish with hunger? So once again, oh, I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm reading the wrong one. I wanted to stay in Romans. I mean, Luke, but I need to go back to Romans. I need to go to Romans 5 and 17. And actually, that was justified right there. Luke 5, I mean, 17, I mean, 15 and 17 was justified to read. It goes with this too. But I need Romans 5 and 17. Romans 5, 17 says, For if by the one man's offense death uh, reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. So watch. We were justified. When, 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 when Adam sinned, Adam took, brought sin into the world. When he did what he was supposed to do, it was Adam. Don't let nobody continue to say it was all Eve because God spoke to Adam and told Adam what's supposed to take place. Adam, you supposed to pastor Eve but since you didn't now the now that you did what I told you not to do sin is in the worth because you are disobedient but watch in in the same thing in in 5 and 17 the second part <clears throat> it says much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. So watch this. You get much more when Jesus Christ came. Jesus Christ said, I came to justify each and every person that laid down his life. And when you lay down your life, he said, now you can be raised with me in heaven. Not only in heaven, but on the earth. So when you gave your life to Christ, first you died to sin, then you rose to be in salvation and having the glory of God with you, if you understand me. So we're justified when the, when the second Adam came in the form of Jesus Christ and said, I justified you through my death. I allowed you to live now, is what he was telling us. He said, I, I've given you the authority to continue to walk the earth. Okay, it, it, that might not make it a little sick. Go to uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 21. That might, this might bring it home a little bit better for you. Yeah. It says, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Your righteousness in God. So watch, it says, if this action that, that the sentence of condemnation under, under which we rest as sinners is changed to one being justified. So what? You don't rest under being sinners no more. You, now you are justified as being joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Is what this is telling you. You're no longer a sinner. You no longer sin for a living. You're justified through Jesus Christ who knew no sin but took on sin so that we can walk the earth as joint heirs with him. That we can reign with him. Romans 8 and 1. He take you, give you a little bit more. It says, there is, or there is therefore no no, wait, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Let me ask you a question. Who are you walking in? What are you walking in? Are you walking in the flesh or are you walking in the spirit of God? 
Because you're justified if you're walking in the spirit of God. You ask no more condemnation. That means that I don't got to be guilty of this stuff. I don't have to have, I don't have to let this stuff bulk me down anymore because Jesus Christ has taken it on for me. And he said, no condemnation no more for you. Now, he says, no more condemnation. The pain is gone. <laughs> This makes this justification plain to me. What? Justification means God forgives you or in me our sins and treats us re relatively as if we had never did anything. What's the problem? We continue to remember the sin. We continue to carry the sin along with us. But God says, I treat you as if you never committed the sin. Once you ask for me to forgive you. That's why I sent my son in the earth. We carry it, mother. We continue to say, I remember when. And we let this sin nation continue to fester in us. But God says that I've forgiven you as if you never did it again, anything. And this is an important part for us to remember who we are in him. And that's the key for us. When we remember who we are in him, God is going to let us free. See, what God does for us and what the devil doesn't want you to know is, and I want you to remember that, what God does for us and what the devil don't want you to know is, is when Jesus forgave us, he wiped the slate clean for us. Amen. If I would walk over there, on that chalkboard, where, where our theme for the year is grace upon grace, John 1 and 16, and get an eraser and wipe it away. And then come back and, and get a, a wet towel and wipe it. It's gone. You don't see it no more. That's what Jesus and God is saying for us. God said, I sent my son to wipe it away. He, he said, not only wipe it away, he said, I came to clean it. That you don't got to see it no more. He said, like, you throw it into the sea of forgetfulness. And if, when you throw it into the sea of forgetfulness, that you understand that it's not there anymore. It's like the sea took it away and swallowed it up. Do you understand me? He swallowed it up for us so we can move on. We no longer have to be, we no longer have to remember what we did. So we need to stop pulling it up on our own in our Rememberdex or Rolodex or whatever you used to call that thing. Rolodex. We don't have to bring it up no more. He treats us like we never did it, mother. I didn't do nothing. Because God forgave me. I, I don't have to do harp on that the rest of my life. See, this is important for you to know because the devil is going to continue to try to throw it in your face. He's going to try to continue to remind you of what, what we did and where we came from. But see, can a man not be born again? I don't have to go back in my mother's womb. I can't go back up in there. But I can be born again in Christ. So when I was born again, I'm a new creature. So the things, behold, all things have become new for me. So what I used to do is gone. I'm new in Christ. I'm being justified by faith. And the faith was that Jesus faithfully stayed on the cross for me. He didn't get down when he could. I'm justified. <laughs> that ain't me no more, mother. I am a new creature. Whatever y'all said about me, that's not me. Talk about who I am now. I'm born again. I'm righteous of Christ. I'm living in overflow. I'm living in the favor of God. And as the Jane Fortune song say, favor is chasing me down. It's chasing me down. <laughs> I can't outrun it. And I don't want to outrun it. Favor is chasing me down. Can you, can you understand that? Can you, can you handle that? <laughs> but watch this. Not only the devil is trying to, to remind you, but his little helpers. And it might be a cousin. It might be a co-worker. Sometimes it's a mama and daddy. Trying to remember. Boy, sit down. You, this, this is what you used to do. Got to know that. 
people will continue to remind us of what we once did or what we once were. They're going to continue to feed this into your head. Continue. But you got what you got to do is talk, talk louder. No, I'm not that. I'm a born again, washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, redeemed of the Lord. Because what? I say so. That's what it is. What a man think is in his heart, so is he. So watch. My heart says that, and it pumps it, that I'm, I'm redeemed of the Lord. I'm justified by Jesus Christ. I, I am a helper to the Lord. I am who he said that I am because I am sent me. Did y'all get that? I am sent me. I don't need those people telling me that. I can remember that stuff in my own mind if I needed to. I don't need nobody to continue to beat me down that way. I can do that myself. See, this is where we got to understand how Jesus operated in us. And this is where it gets hard for some of us. Because we can't speak to ourselves in that manner of helping ourselves get better. God wipes it out and forgives us of all of it. Human nature isn't wired this way. And that's why God said, I'll set you aside. I've set my children aside. He said, I, you're not better than anybody, but I'll set you aside. Because I'm wiring you differently. And watch, when I wire you differently, you can't call any, any electrician because this electrician won't understand the wiring process that's in you. It, it was like a conversation I had with an individual. And the more that they talked, the more that, I, that the Lord was telling me, they can't use the worldly system to feed into them. Because I'm wiring you differently. Write that down for me. I need to get back with that individual. Because I'm wiring you differently. So you can't, you, what is it saying? You can't take worldly counseling and you becoming a child of God. Not saying that this worldly counseling is not good. I'm not saying that you got some good counseling. But you wire differently than the worldly counsel that they try to put in you. Do you understand me? Everybody understand me? I don't want to move from that point. I, I, that's a stickling point to me right there. We're wired differently than everybody else. Why? Because you're a child of God. And everybody can't communicate to you because of the level that God placed in you. I can't go out there and just, if, if, if I start going haywire and say, I need you to counsel me. I got to have the godly wired person that counsel me. Amen. If you understand what I'm saying. Amen. I need this kind of counseling. I need that because of the way that God wires us. <laughs> so we are justified solely by faith. What is faith? First of all, what is faith? Faith is you believing what God said about you. And, you are, and then you operate in that belief that God said about you. So what you mean, Pastor? That means you got to go forth. That means you can't just come in here and sit there. You got to go forth and do what God says. Because if you come in, you hear God's word, you said, I believe it. And you don't operate it. Faith is dead without works. So you didn't move. You didn't operate. You're not believing what God said. You got to put this thing in operation. Let the word work in you. Operate in that thing. You got benefits. Being justified by faith. Benefits. Let's go to look at Romans 5 and 1. Number one benefit that we have. And I'm trying. I think we're going to get done today. I don't think I'm going to get a part three. I think I can get done today. Number one. We have peace with God. That's a benefit. You're going to find that in Romans 5 and 1. This means we have the ability to have a personal relationship with God. You don't need a priest to go before you to God. You have a personal relationship because you have benefits with God. 
<laughs> you don't have to run to somebody and always ask them for pray, to pray for you. Don't get me wrong. We love praying with you, but you don't have to always go. If you, if you get a busy signal on somebody's phone when you call them, just stop dialing and start praying. Maybe God is telling you, you need to come to me on your own sometime. Stop using somebody else. You got benefits through me. Now, we love praying with folks. Don't get me wrong. I don't want y'all to run out here like somebody did on me before and said, that pastor said he ain't praying for nobody. I love praying with you. But you got to first what? Believe in the prayer request that you ask him. Yeah, I set people down when they asked me to pray. I asked them, did they believe? They didn't believe. Why am I going to waste my time if you don't believe? That's all I'm saying. We can pray for ourselves. I want you to understand this. It's your own relationship with God that's going to that's going to that's going to empower you. You don't have to go through to uh, to a priest. You don't have to seek somebody else. You can do this on your own. But the word still says, I still got it says where there's two or three. He's in the midst, not saying that he's not there with you. Because if, watch, if you understand the operation system of God, Pastor Wendy, watch. It says, you're never alone. You always have the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit with you. So if you have the Father, Son, Holy Spirit in you, how many you have? He's still in the midst. My wife, math a little off today. <laughs> Number two, we have access to God's grace. Ain't that something? He said, you have access. It, it, Pastor, what you find that in, in Romans chapter 5, verse 2? He said, you have access to my grace. Not just any kind, old kind of grace, but the word says his grace. His grace. Hey, hey, I can't give you no better grace than God gives you. So why wouldn't you want to go to him, build your relationship, get his grace? Pastor Campbell's grace can run out sometime. God's grace won't run out on you if you continue to do what's right. You understand me? God opens up the, the door that allows us to have the power in Jesus' name. Man, you mean God, I come to you and, and I seek you and, and I do what's right. I can open the door and you give me the power in Jesus' name? Do you understand what's in you? What's in us? What he's telling us? Number three. We have the ability to rejoice in the hope of God's glory. I got the ability to, to rejoice in God's glory. Romans chapter 5 verse 2 again. This means when we, when we are facing hard times in life, the ability gives us the opportunity to rejoice in the hope that God's glory is going to show up. It gives us the ability to, to rejoice in that. We know that God is going to show up. And I'm rejoicing in it because I know he is. <laughs> it means I will not see a, I will, I will not see a well. I may not see an answer to my problem. I, I may not see how my hours on my job is going to change in my life. I may not see how I'm going to get this new job or, to, or a better way of life. But what I can do, what I can do is rejoice. Amen. Because I got hope. I can rejoice because I got hope that God's glory is going to step in and make a way out of no way. Promises from God. He's given us this stuff. But we got to be able to I mean, access this, what he gives us. We got to open ourselves up. God is trying to show us. He is saying that you don't have to rejoice in the manifestation of that thing, but shout in the revelation of it. Shout in the revelation of it. Shout in the revelation. I don't need to see it come to fruition. All I have to know is it is coming. 
And I'm thanking you, God, because it is coming. And then you said in your word that you're not a man that you should lie. That if you spoke it, it's going to take place. So God, if you spoke this in my spirit, all I got to do is rejoice and understand that now is coming. Hallelujah. Glory, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Watch this. What he says. Okay, watch this. He said, don't move. He said, watch. And he said, and not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Romans 5 and 3. So even while I'm suffering, I'm rejoicing in him because it's giving me something that I need. It's strengthening me while needed. The ability to shout and hope that God is going to work it out. I got the ability to shout and jump and praise him because he's going to work it out. It's what makes a difference in the world because we know he's going to work it out. We got to get this thing in our spirit. And if you get this in your spirit, watch what it says. While the world is crying about their problems, we as a body of believers are dancing and shouting in our sufferings. They, 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 they're crying about their, their, their sufferings. But the body of Christ, as long as you believe in what God is doing... Rejoice it because I understand what it's doing for me. People are watching you, saints. People are watching every saint and see how you're gonna how you're gonna deal with this. What you gonna do about this drama that we see? I look at on Facebook, they continuously, 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 day after day publishing something about Trumpy Dumpty. I don't get involved in that. I'm, I want to see what the word is saying. I want to see what God is telling me. He's, and from this message that, that we've been justified by faith is that he's saying that I'm taking care of this. I'm doing what I need to do. Watch. If, if you get off of trying to continue to look at he, what he's doing, you're not focused on what I'm doing. So what? When Trump is doing this, you need to be on your knees doing that. And this is what's going to get you. This is what's going to bring us back. Because we're doing what God wants us to do. But we can't do what God wants us to do because we get involved in the mess of the world. And God don't want us to be in that stuff. He wants to set us aside and set us on high to do what he wants us to do. Function in the way that he wants us to function, I got to think. He wants us to function in the way that we want to function. The battery is dying, that's why I changed. <laughs> You can hear the, the tweet, but feedback. Sorry about that. So he gives us the ability to celebrate when they're, when they're doing what they're doing. But all we got to do is stand strong on what Christ wants us to do as body of believers. <laughs> People are watching us saying, what are they going to do about this drama? You just start giving God the praise in the middle of the suffering. Say, Lord, I praise you. Lord, I thank you. I magnify your holy name, God. Everything that you're doing, God, I see the order. See, God has said, I need you to get out of the drama, and I need you to get in the praise. I need you to get out of that, and I need you to get into me. So when we get into him, he can take the focus off that stuff and place it on him. God said, all you got to do, my, hey, I'm going to be up all night, God said. Why don't you give it to me? Give it to me, God is saying. You don't got to worry about it. We can give glory and shout in the middle of a trial. So we're going through a trial as a nation. But where does it shout? And where's the glory at? Watch. Paul states that as, a believers, as believers, we now stand in a place of highest privilege. This is the place that we should be standing. The highest privilege of, this is like a spoiled kid, that you got this high privilege from your parents. God has said, I have given you a high privilege. In Paul's word, but instead of being enemies, we had to become his friends. In fact, his own children, John 15 and 15 says, 
I no longer call you servants, but because of a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you, you friends. For everything that I've learned from my father, I have made known to you. And this is what Jesus Christ is telling us. Everything that he learned from God, he's made known to us. And you're going to find that in John 15 and 15. So if you was a servant or if you was a slave, you wouldn't know it. So God says, stop being servant and slave to sin and become my friend. So then you can be adopted into my kingdom and you can learn everything that I've taught my son Jesus. Galatians 4 and 5 says, to, to redeem those under the law that we might receive the full rights of sons. Do you want to have the full rights? Of sons. As Paul states clearly in 1 Corinthians 13 and 13, faith, hope, and love are at the, the heart of the Christian's life. Our relationship with God begins with faith, which helps us realize that we are delivered from our past by Christ's death. I'm delivered by Christ dying. Hope grows as we learn all that God has in mind for us. It gives us the promise of the future. It gives us the promise of the future. Okay, you might need to get a shout on this one, but listen to this one. Romans 5, it says, it says, 5 and 4, perseverance, character, and character, hope. In verse 5, and hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who he give, has given to us. So God says, I've given you everything that you need by the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. So you've got hope. You've got perseverance. You've got everything it takes to be a part of the kingdom. Why? Let's come and close it out with Romans 6 and 4. It says, Therefore we have buried, we were, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Everybody stand. Please stand. Face the right, to the wall, to the right of you. Just walk to the wall. Everybody over left, to the left. Just walk. Come back. Take your time, mother. And I'm going to tell you what just took place. I'm going to tell you exactly what just put, it took place. You just walked in the newness of life. Amen. And give God some glory. Give me some more glory in here. Amen.